It's the Planet of the Apes action catapult with Erko and Ursus. Can they destroy the astronaut Verdon? There he is. Capture him. Move the catapult into position. Fire the boulders. Reset the catapult. Keep firing. We got him. He's surrendering. Put burden into the wagon. Another Planet of the Apes adventure. Planet of the Apes catapult and wagon. Figures and horse sold separately by Migo. Hey, it's Tim from Toy Tinker Tim. In this episode, we have a Mego Planet of the Apes action stallion here. And uh, he has lost his get up and go. This is from the time where remote control meant we had a wire going to a little uh, battery operated handheld device. So, not so remote control after all. It just meant you weren't standing there using it with your hand, you were standing uh, less than a foot away with a um, wired controller to make it walk. So anyhow, the horse here is uh, had some fresh batteries put into the controller, but there is no motion, no movement. So we're going to take this apart and see what we can figure out as far as why he's lost his gumption and just won't get around here. Okay, holding our uh, action stallion together, we have three screws, one in the neck, belly, and the posterior here. Uh, they're just little fine Phillips head screws. So, let's see here, let's, let's try to pop these out. There we go. Um, you know, again, Nowadays, we would probably have this thing all just glued together. No uh, screw access to it, to uh, being able to get in there. And uh, I'm sure that for others uh, growing up, if they ran into trouble, if they were inquisitive, trouble with the horse not working. Uh, if they were inquisitive enough, they probably just popped out a screwdriver and took this horse apart and it ended up in the trash next shortly after that. So let's take a look here. At our construction here. Mm -hmm. Get it over the hoof. There we go. So here's a look inside our action stallion. There's a little uh, mechanism there, a little bar coming off. Uh, takeoff rod back into here from the motor, and that's pushing on the tail there to give that little wag action there as it walks. I think that's just a pin. Pin going through to hold into that spot. I'm going to move our remote control over to there out of the way here for us. And the other half of the shell just slides down here too. There's nothing holding that into place. The two halves are just held by three screws on opposite sides of the horse. There we go. And we're down to this cutting edge technology here. That's providing our walking here our locomotion for our action stallion. There's the heart of it all. So what I'm going to do here to try to start trying to troubleshoot is uh, uh, okay. Seems like crimity. Seems like there should be something else here going on. No, okay, so there's a gears inside. 
and that's how it is turning. Hmm. Okay. So I'll check and make sure first here all our gears are lined up. I'm going to check the uh, terminals here on the motor. Uh, make sure those are still in a good setting. And then I'm going to take a uh, voltage meter and do a, uh, I think the term is continuity test on the wire to see if uh, maybe in one of these real fine gauge wires, if there's a break in there from the bending, bending and age. And then let's take a look in here. Uh, then I'll go into the remote control here and uh, I'll check those and uh, see how that's all in and uh, let's take a look in here too as, as well since we're at it here huh let's see so right now I'm looking at, <clears throat> I'm thinking more of a electrical issue than uh, something with that motor. The, uh, again, I'm trying to look over the camera and get this thing. Oh, oh come on. There we go. Now we're at it. Let's take a look in here as well. Okay. So there's that. There's our leads. Little rocker switch there to push down on there. And there's our problem, or at least one of them. <clears throat> Don't know yet. I'll go on and check the other things too the wiring but I can see here and I think you can see too one of the tabs here on this uh, switch is broke so uh, it's not making any contact well when you push on it it's not making any contact here which isn't making any contact there to make it go I'm going to guess that's a good 90 to 95% of the problem right there, but I'm going to check through everything else and looks like I'm going to have to, I would say, fabricate a new uh, switch here for the remote because uh, I only see that breaking again. If that were just try to uh, repair. I don't think that could just be glued to repair. It's just going to break again. Yeah, so this side's really cracked. That one's getting ready to go. So imagine what happens if I try to remember back as a kid. You're pushing on it and it's not getting the action, so what do you do? You just push down harder on it. You don't know it's cracking on the inside there. So you probably think the batteries are getting weak or whatever, so you just push harder to try to make that connection until it's, it's stressed it out. So, so at least one thing for sure, uh, I'll be fabricating that, and then I'll go back and check through the uh, electrical setup here. All right. To save some time in the, in the video to make these things not so long, I'm gonna just explain where I'm at so far on uh, duplicating this switch that uh, the one was already cracked and barely hanging and the other just totally fell off in the process. Uh, I'm making a press mold to duplicate that and uh, the way I'm doing that is I'm using some Sculpey. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think, another one is uh, Fimo, is another brand. It's a polymer clay and uh, I'm using the soft one and then what I'm doing is I'm pressing this into the clay and then uh, when you heat it it gets hard so I've made a two-piece mold top and bottom 
and then I'm going to use the epoxy resin uh, that you mix together. You knead it together. I'm pressing it into there and then I'm taking the two halves and pushing it together to make my replacement switch. So uh, the polymer clay can be baked in the oven, but making the mold with this uh, switch in place, I did not want to put that in the oven, so another way to do it is to boil it. And uh, what happens is, yes, it sets. It's a little bit of a different uh, consistency, though, than from the oven. It's, it's hard, but it's kind of like a weird, it's like a waxy kind of a hard. So it's not quite the same, but it gets the job done for what I'm needing to do. While the uh, molds to get the new switch made are uh, heating and cooking and doing their thing, come back over to do all the check on the connections. And then I also just kind of did a clean up and oil on the gears and things like that. So no breaks in the wire, all the terminals are good and uh, it's, it's going. And uh, yeah, we have forward and reverse here. Yes, a little loud. Uh, nobody's gonna be caught by surprise coming up on this horse, that's for sure. Um, so, <laughs> yes, so it's loud, but uh, everything's working good, no electrical issues. So I'll go back over to uh, focus more on uh, molding and the uh, manufacture fabrication of the switch for uh, for the remote control here. And I'll probably also go ahead and just give the horse uh, the shell here and everything a good cleanup. It's, uh, it's a little gritty, a little dusty and dirty. And uh, get all these parts nice and cleaned up, tuned up. And uh, that way when the switch is ready, we'll have a nice complete look and piece here. I've got my two-piece mold. Uh, I've sprayed it with some mold release. I use uh, Smooth On. Uh, I've used them for resin uh, projects and silicone molds and things like that of that nature. So that's the one I use. But anyhow, so I've sprayed that, and uh, so that's already treated. I'm using the Quick Steel. There's a lot of glare on that, but it's the uh, epoxy resin It comes like this where I'm going to cut off a chunk and you mix it together so that the two colors are totally mixed and then it sets in like five minutes. So once you start working it together, you got to kind of keep it moving. So I'm going to uh, work this once it's mixed in there by hand first and kind of push it in to get it, make sure it's getting down into all the little details and crevices in there. And then I'll put it together. Uh, just a side note, so to make it go a little bit quicker once I go to put it all together, I pre-mark the sides so I can just quickly put that together. I can keep track so there's a little tip uh, when you're working with that. So I'm going to use this little tool here. I'm probably going to cut off more than what I need. That's fine. Uh, close that up. Pop that back in the little storage tube. Keep that fresh and preserved. And go ahead and start mixing this together. And it's, it's sticky. So that's primarily, I'm sure too, it's just general not good to have chemicals in contact with your skin but it's very sticky and if you've worked with uh, two-part resin like the ones in the squeeze tubes or like syringe like looking things 
this, as soon as you start mixing it, <clears throat> you can tell it's that same kind of a smell uh, that you get. So we're almost there in the color. It's getting there. Just kind of keep it moving. Like I say, it does. It sets up. So I think we're pretty good. It's sticky. All right. So I'm going to try to work this in into here good first. Here's the piece, uh, now that it's gotten out of that uh, press mold, and um, it might not look like much right now, but it's about where it should be. Picked up a good amount of the detail uh, from the original, and uh, so all I have to do now is just kind of trim off all the other stuff here carefully and then I'll uh, paint it after that then uh, put a sealer on it and then uh, I'll hook it back up into the remote and we should be good to go just wanted to quick put in this uh, view before I start closing up everything here but uh, this is the uh, replacement switch that I made out of the uh, resin material and uh, so that's how that turned out uh, it's all going to be covered by the case so I didn't bother to paint every single thing about it just painted the uh, top primarily there in sides and then put on a coat of the satin finish over that to act as a protector to uh, cut down on the scuffs and wear and tear on there though so that's how that turned out and we'll take a look at the final product here we have the new uh, replacement switch put into the remote control soldier ape is waiting for his turn to take a ride here so there we go clutching backwards and forwards Pretty quick, it just it's a little noisy, but it's been a few years, so uh, there's a little melt mark uh, going on there on the side of the saddle, so I'll see about touching that up or whatever there, but I think, uh, you know, the main thing was, was to get the mechanics of this all going again, and uh, that has been accomplished here, so. The action stallion is back in action here, so ready for adventures here. And again, as always, thanks for watching. Toy Tinker Tim here on YouTube. Subscribe so you can uh, keep up on all the latest adventures and repairs. And uh, thanks 